I put out the Ghost Notes video a couple of years ago, and it was just one of those videos that takes a ton of time to research and pare down to the essential details. The core concept was difficult enough to get to grips with, so bogging it down with uh, extra details that were nice to have, but not absolutely essential to understand what's going on, uh, that had to be stripped out so that it wasn't going to confuse anyone who was going to have a bit of difficulty getting with the technical details right at the start. And this just meant there were some fun facts that had to be excluded for the sake of brevity and clarity. So, let's take a look at them. Number 1. At 2 minutes and 13. But, if a ghost note is played without having encountered a regular note during this playback, the extra detail to contend with here is that what happens for a newly loaded song? Well, obviously it will just use instrument 00, the one right at the top of the instrument selector. Almost nobody is going to encounter this unless you've you know, created a song and for some reason you have ghost notes right at the start of the song and you're just going to play it through the first time without having encountered any uh, actual instruments with instrument numbers through any previous playback. Like I said, this will affect almost nobody, but it could happen and so just so you know what's happening in that instance, it will default to instrument 00. zero. Number 2 at 3 minutes 34. Although playback of an instrument samples are restarted, the modulations are not. They continue uninterrupted. So this is actually a really cool feature and it gives you an extra amount of control over what happens with the envelopes in the modulation section. And it doesn't just affect uh, Renoise 3.0 and up as well. This will also affect uh, previous Renoise versions because there was an instrument envelope section there and ghost notes and this effect goes all the way back to those earlier versions too. The particular instance that you need to take a look at here is what happens when the envelopes have ended, but the note continues, and then it is ghosted? And the answer, of course, is nothing. Some people might expect something different, because it's kind of an unusual situation. You might expect things to restart, but they don't. Absolutely nothing happens. Number 3 at 5 minutes and 38. The other things that are affected are the I and O effect commands in both the volume and effects columns. So this one applies to using ghost notes with the I and O commands when applied to phrases that are using plugin and MIDI components. And the answer is, yes, it works exactly the same as when using samples. So it's entirely consistent, and the reason this was removed is because it's very obvious, and it would just clutter up the script. Number 4. 642. Concerning phrases and pitching and switching. Now, what happens when there are multiple triggerings of a phrase in the pattern editor via different columns and tracks. So that is, when there's the same phrase playing in different places simultaneously. What happens there? Well, as you might expect, it'd be incredibly complicated to do something very complicated. You could almost never keep track of everything that would ever supposed to happen across the different phrases and the different permutations of those phrases happening simultaneously in the pattern editor. So, the answer is, each instance plays 
completely independently. They have no effect on each other at all. Regular notes played from one phrase activation will not affect the ghost notes in another. And finally, an old favourite at number 5, concerning an old tracker technique which is similar to ghost notes, but just doesn't really apply to renoise. In ProTracker and other older trackers, if you use the sample number only, that is without notes, it will raise the volume back to full if it's been reduced. And this is usually combined with the A volume slide command for stuttering. So you'll push the volume down with A and then because what will normally happen is you'll fill up the pattern with just the sample number. Whenever A is struck, the volume is instantly brought back up and you have this nice stuttering rhythm, which uh, if you offset it against the what the drums are doing, you can come up with some really cool stuff. Now, the reason this doesn't really apply to Renoise is because Renoise has a volume column, as opposed to the older trackers, which do not. So, the old C set volume command in Renoise became cut volume. So, that is quicker to enter, just because it's one column. But if you want to use more than one column, then it's actually more versatile for that stuttering effect, because you also have control over the tick that you want it to be applied at. <laughs> 